work ethic. I have to say this. I that, agree. That he. Uh, wait a minute. How do I get rid of this thing? Good. <laughs> Yeah, you're not interviewing Stanley Cups. Yeah, you think I'd be able to know how yeah. to run this show every once in a while. You'd think. Uh, when you go to, let me say this. When you go to the Christian Men's Job Corps, and I got invited to go this last year. Uh, Mike Grexiel invited me. It's over. They have a, an annual kind of event. Um, one of our one of the speakers this year was a guy I go to church with, and um, Mike Grexiel invited me to go. And, you know, and you, you, you know, you just feel the need to give money right away yeah you know, and so i i did i did my small donation but um every I'm, donation every counts. donation i think counts so you know i'd love to give more and that's my goal next year because i think what what tom does is so important um because how many of us know somebody who's battled addiction who just needs a some something am, am i am i am i accurate in that uh in that uh description you know like what what your purpose is over there at the christian men's job court which is not why we're here necessarily but i think it's a good place to start oh, it's, I mean, oh. it's an important, you know, part of this community yeah. it's not just addiction i mean yeah. it's anybody that's convicted of a felony offense yeah uh, men yeah uh, and, the, and the district courts i've been, had a great relationship for 20 years and uh, actually uh, uh judge patillo was on my founding board yeah and uh, they're all great friends, and so we came up with this concept of, of trying to to reduce the recidivism rate right. at the jail. Yeah, and, and it's been very effective. How did you? That's great. How did you get involved with that organization? How did you? What what, what, what prompted you? It is kind of weird, you know. Uh, back in 2002, we had a great flood here. Mm -hmm. It was on national TV. I remember house, it. You know, That's when I graduated high out. school. Right. Bandera was an island. Yeah, yeah. it was. And, and I felt the calling to go into some ministry work at that mm -hmm. time. I had my own business, a land yeah. clearing deal, and and uh, so I got called to be the director of Curry Interfaith Disaster Response. Okay. And we wrapped it up. And then Dave Weekly, that was y'all's man of the year. Yeah, right. Uh, Dave and Bill Blackburn and others uh, called me and said, hey, we've been talking about opening up this Christian Men's Job Corps, and we would like you to, to, to be the person to run that. And, and, I, and were you skeptical at first, or were you? Very skeptical. Yeah. I, big Zach, I had been literally praying about what I should do next, because I have time with my own company. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and then I get a phone call trying to give me an opportunity, and I said, nah, you know, I don't think so. Right. You know, so like anybody else, I don't always listen to, to <laughs> right. But I did, and, and I have never turned back since. I loved it, uh, and I still love it. And, and then we got about... A little over five years ago, it got to where attendance was, was really low. Mm -hmm. Graduated a class of like three people. Yeah. And so I started praying about what to do again, and I got a hold of the, the district judges and said, here's my thoughts. Yeah. And they said, you know what? That would be a great idea, and we've never turned back. But know? it's a diversion program, you know, basically. I mean, you, it is. these guys have had some some real struggles with, you know, being in prison and that, that whole whole area. Yeah, but it's it's all cognitive, and, mm -hmm. and so we I go really deep, and, and you know I've got a doctorate in philosophy of Christian counseling, and so and so it goes really deep into getting them almost like a free therapy session for them. Yeah, uh, to find out why they got mm -hmm. the way they are, but I get them to discover it themselves. Yeah, and that's the reason it's effective. I'm just not up there telling them, "Hey, you're bad." Right. 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 Yeah, they know that. Yeah, they know. Right. They know. Yeah. So very I mean, effective. We, I you, love it. What would you say? You know, I, I mean, you know, I, I look at this from some point, like I've had this conversation with people who've had addiction. I'm like, you know, I always hear, oh, well, you know, it's there's there's these groups are there. There's a high failure rate. There's a high, you know, um, you know, you know, recidivism. Uh, yeah, well, that, too. And um, but I'm like, yeah, but that's life, too. Right. You know, so w An how do you measure? Do disease. you measure success? Do you have like a like a. Like uh, there's there's no real measurement of mm -hmm. it because it's an individual thing. But yeah. but um, well, at that breakfast, you saw Andrea mm -hmm. Bodie was our guest yep, speaker, right? And she's the head of probation, and and she said they have uh, seen a great reduction. Mm -hmm. And so we we've looked at our numbers a little bit nationally. Recidivism rates about sixty percent. Yeah. And for us, it's somewhere around nine, eight or nine percent. Wow. Wow. Once they've gone through, and that could be because we're in Kirk County. Yeah. I don't know. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're here. There's there's the one thing I like about Kerr County, and I, and I feel very strongly about this, and I've shared this with members of my family, is that there is a tremendous support community here, non-judgmental for the most part. <laughs> you know, there was going to yeah. but I mean, there's a support effort here that I think is unmatched. What I've seen, you know, there's no, I agree. there's things here in this community that you don't have elsewhere. Right, so. right. But 
we've also got a sheriff's department that's unmatched, and they lock them up pretty yep. quick. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they you know, do. And so, you know, it's uh, the, the, the saying for Kerr County is, you know, you come here on vacation and leave on probation. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't say that in tourism. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you what the guy I know. Is doing I just, I just, I'm like, in case my boss but, is watching. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, it, but it's not because they're overzealous no, I understand. with their job. I know, it's, I understand it's what you're saying. Yeah. When you have all these these treatment facilities around here, oh, yeah. it attracts people uh, yes. with drugs. It's true. Yeah. You know, one, of, it is one of the hardest things I've seen yet to wa- to watch was that the recovery community, which has a coalition that's that's part of the city of Kerrville. You know, they did a thing of all of the people who've been through these facilities who've died, you know, from overdoses right. or mm-hmm. accidents. And it's staggering how many young young adults uh, have, you know, they can't seem to escape Well, this. and now they're, they're developing addictions to even stuff that's legal like Kratom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, right. And, 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 and that's a real problem. Yeah, right. Uh, all right, well, but see, because you don't have enough to do, you're, you've decided that you're going to run for precinct one <laughs> commissioner. Well, of course. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, okay, and I always tell us elected officials, are you crazy or what? I mean, uh, did did you, you, even before we ran into these conferences with Harley, Harley Ballou and precinct one, you, 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 you had anticipated that he would retire at the end of his term and we're going to run. Um, what what drove you to want to run? Well, a whole lot, actually. First off, I pray a lot about everything mm-hmm. before I ever make a decision on it. But um, on top of the, 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 the life skills, uh, I'm, I'm already an elected official over at Headwaters. Right. You know, I've been there for seven years. And, and I'm a, a very rules-oriented type person. And, and I think that's a lot of what I bring to the table. This yeah. yeah. It's because I read rules. I, 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 well, that I makes you good at what I you go do. I through stuff with attorneys. And, right. And everybody else. And I try to find out what the intent is and, and the meaning. And and so the last seven years at Headwaters, that's what I've done. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've already, uh, the stuff over at the Job Corps, I already know is all I need to know. I don't want right. to become a lawyer. I, I don't want to be one of them. But you have a, I mean, it gives you a unique perspective on two areas. You know, you know the sheriff's office is the biggest Right. budget expense in the county right um and the uh and then water obviously is the biggest issue facing the future of i mean i i tell people all the time that the leeds you know foundation really was around growth and development uh coverage which i think is really really important and how do we how do we you know mitigate you know uh you know water conservation or how do we how do we instill water conservation into our communities so those are two big issues what else stands out in your mind um, our rules. Mm-hmm. We, you know, we, we're going to have a we're going to have a hard time, even with the, the existing rules that we've got, yeah. trying to maintain them. Legislation changes every two years. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. And it's already changed to the point now that our our rules and regulations that they wrote, subdivision rules and re- regulations that they just got through rubber stamping a year, year and a half ago, mm-hmm. uh, already need altering and fixing. Right. And, and last time we did this, it went from 2007 to 2019 or 20 before they ever made it, or 23, right. before mm-hmm. they made a change. Right. Um, the subdivision rules, uh, in the last commissioner's court meeting, there was a guy that spoke, uh, ironically, after George Baruti, but he, he, he told the court, which I thought was interesting, that he felt like the subdivision rules were unconstitutional and uh, infringed on his property rights to develop his property as he saw fit. Do you, would you, how would you counter that kind of argument as a commissioner? That he felt it was unconstitutional? He felt like the subdivision rules um, were, were infringing on his property rights um, to do what he wanted to do with the land. Yeah, well, those subdivision rules are not set up to control density, mm-hmm. but they do need to, to be set up for the best conservation and growth. Yeah that we can have here. And so you're going to have governmental authority that's going to allow that. But you also have... If you're going uh, to do that, you might as well say most of the Constitution is... is on, you know. Right, right. The, the, but the land issues, though, especially on subdivision rules, um, are, you know, the legislature has a lot of say over what you guys can do and what you can't do. Right. You know, how do you navigate that? that because it, it, this is one thing I've told people here. You're, it's there. It's weighted against. It's weighted in the favor of developers. You know, right. what's to stop you know a, a landowner in Center Point from saying, you know, I want to build 750 homes here. How do you? How do you? How do you? How do you, how do you address that issue fairly? I guess. Well, a lot of that is is by having the relationship you have with Headwaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. That automatically says that you know if you're going to do that, there's a lot of factors that play into that. You've got to have 10 acres to put in a well. Yeah. 
unless you put in a public water system. Mm -hmm. Those are extremely expensive, and most developers don't want to get that deep into it. The county does not actually do anything in regards to that. Yeah. They just follow the rules. Um, yeah, and they, and they don't write those rules. I mm -hmm. think what that probably, the problem with that one was, is that whenever they took that EDAP money mm -hmm. to put in that sewage system out there in Centerpoint, yeah. when they took it, they had to adopt the model subdivision rules. Right. And that's, that's uh, Chapter 230, TAC 230 in mm -hmm. the rules. And they had to adopt those rules that, that say, by de definition, if you divide into two or more lots less than five acres, mm -hmm. then you have to do a water availability study. Right. And that is kind of a killer because you can't do one on that type of a track. Right. You've right. got to have land, observation wells, all types of stuff. And so the county doesn't have authority in regards really to water. That's a state statute yeah. there that they had to adopt. They don't have any authority in regards to density as far as saying you can put in however many lots in here. Yeah. They, they, that's the, one of the reasons they passed the new subdivision rules they did was to do away with that density question. Yeah. Because their attorney said, "Hey, I think you're violating the law by, by approaching living, that." Right. right. Yeah. Because that's where that's so, where I. So their subdivision rules and regulations mm -hmm. are strictly infrastructure. Yeah. That's the uh, area that I find the most. So we you know we saw it earlier with uh, precinct two where, where uh, you know a project wanted to go into center point. It was a bad project, quite frankly. It was a weird project. Like it had no ins and outs and it had no fire suppression. It was high density. It had a mobile home attached you to it. You do know that's going to go in now, right? Oh, is it really? Well, they, that's that's what I was saying. Our rules, yeah. that's that's my area. Yeah. Those, those rules have been changed. This last house session, they changed the rules to where now you can, you can they're going to do away basically with almost platting. Yeah. Which kills our whole rules over right. here. To where they can just do a survey with a meets and bounds survey. Mm -hmm. And I think they have to have 10 acres. I haven't got dug deep into it yet, but no. like 10 acre lots, they then they no longer have to put in appropriate roads. Right. They don't have to get all the the paperwork that goes with subdivision platting. And see, so I, they, I that tell you, and wow. are both taking advantage of that new rule. Wow. Today. Yeah, I tell you what. See, that's the thing I, I've told people all the time. Like, you can get mad at us for Californians for moving here. A lot of us like the density that's the the, the limited density that's here now. Mm -hmm. And 40 years ago, they were just they had no they had no rules either. Right. And that's what the problems are. If you look at the, if you look at some of the biggest problems that are that face California, it's from over overbuilding, overdevelopment, overdevelopment. Right. You know, in a hurry, right. in a hurry. So right. that's one of those big issues facing it. Yeah. But does then do you have the water? Then that's the question. You know? it, that becomes a big a big question. They still can't get around Headwaters ten acre rule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so so that'll that'll be a, a, a very powerful impact with that. Now look. You can you can write rules you can you but rules can always be challenged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even though the state allows us to go to ten acres over there, mm -hmm. uh, it hadn't been challenged. Right. And and so who says they're not going to go ahead and do that? Yeah. Uh, I don't think they will, uh, because even the the well drillers around here that were opposed to us doing that to begin with mm -hmm. are now on board saying, hey, how can we help? Yeah. How can we help? That's good. Uh, right. So this this community pulls together when they see it's about conservation. Yeah. And that's the uh, and the, the water issue with headwaters in the city, uh, which I know is a lot of closed session and lawyers things like that. I, I still struggle to see what the controversy is between that. I mean, because if if Kerber wanted to suck all the water out of the aquifer by they're right, that. they're not going to do that, right? They're not doing that. Yeah. That, look, city of Kerrville, and I've told them publicly numerous times, all of them, mm -hmm. they have done a marvelous job, right, with their water. They're, I've never questioned that. They've mm -hmm. never overused. They've never done those types of things. Yeah. Um, all of the all of the debates that we have right now mm -hmm. with the city right now, I tell you, are going to get resolved. Yeah, I'm, I'm very confident in that, uh, and and I can't go into closed door sessions, but but I'll, I'm very confident in it. But I'll tell you, most of it, you were at the meeting, I mm -hmm. think, whenever yeah. I told them you you need yeah. to go to this drought stage. Right. And if you'll recall, Stuart looked at me and said, "Hey, I'd like to sit down with y'all and let's have these meetings." Yeah. And I was open to that. Mm -hmm. Still would have been, but a week later they bought uh, they bought a Austin lawyer, yeah. And so I had to close up, right? And if, if and so now we're making a full circle to where we're actually going to do what we initially set out to do, mm -hmm. and negotiate these problems out and fix them, yeah. Because we all want the same thing, yeah. And and we the last thing this county ever needs is two taxing entities in court, right? That's and, the and, people and, that suffer as a taxpayer. Well, and the, and the other complication of it, too, is that with these developers, you know, being like you have you have areas, I, I think mainly in Precinct 2 and Precinct probably 3, 
where you have large tracts of land, right? And the right. developer can come in there and say, you know what? We want annexation into the city and we because we want water. Right. And and there's little or nothing that the city can really. I mean, they could they can they can block it in some couple couple ways. It's like this Lennar project. You know, the city gave them some 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 funding ultimately. Um, but at the end of the day, those those rules are so weighted in favor of the developers yes. that it's hard to kind of you know you you barely get anything done with that. I've never been able to resolve why they're doing what they're doing on that. We yeah. do we do want growth here. Uh, you know, I I personally like. To see growth, I don't mm. like sitting at a red light. Yeah, right. You know, and I won't. I'm like anybody else, like you or anybody else. When I moved here in 1992, I wanted the door closed behind me. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> you know? right. So I live. What was that yeah. movie? Nowhere in time. Yeah, right. in time yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I wanted. I wanted that. Yeah. I wanted that. I wanted that. You wanted but, but I also wanted all the new stuff that we've got in town too. Right. 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 Uh, yeah. And so uh, we all want that. And so, as far as saying being pro growth. I'm not. I'm. I'm for a sustainable growth. Yeah. 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 I think that I, I, that's exactly right. I think that you're. That's the. If you can manage sustainable growth and you can manage growth that can right. that can benefit the community without overwhelming the community, right. and that's what I've seen historically is that you have communities in the West, especially, that just didn't exist 25 years ago, and there's all these sort of you know ramifications from that. So that's a big. That's a big issue. It is. Um, the other one too, you know, um, we we've had this controversy over the last year over over election integrity. Um, I think everyone wants to have a secure election, but the road to get there this last year, um, initiated by Rich Paces, um, I think was probably one of the biggest disasters the county faced last year. How do you instill confidence in the, in the county staff now? Because now it's switched over. Bob Reeves is out of it now. Uh, uh, Ian Ian Colum. Colum is mm-hmm. now in charge of it. but I think that's good because Ian's a, Ian's uh, a good kid Ian and, is a good and, kid and, and I love him to death he, he's overwhelmed right now yeah <laughs> he took on a he, he bit off a big job he did but mm-hmm. he is capable he yeah. did if right. I was his age and took on the job he took on I'd be overwhelmed too. right you know. Yes, but I don't think it, it is a testament knowing Ian. Um, I'm good friends with him and his, oh, okay. his wife. Um, it's my boss's son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I know Ian, and I know that he is more than capable to handle this, and I know he's already been doing a lot of it, sure. yeah. given sure. his role he before. Um, what, uh, what, what would you do to, you know, if elected? What, 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 kind of, what kind of tack do you want to take on with election integrity? Oh, my road's pretty simple, and it's one I wish they had have probably taken, mm-hmm. uh, is... We need numbered, auditable ballots right. going through the dumb machines, uh, you know. And if you do that, then then I think you're you're there. And I think every commissioner up there would vote for that. Yeah. I don't think there would be a question of of you know. The arguments over election integrity or anything else. Yeah. I think if you're they're numbered paper ballots going through a machine. And my understanding, I think, at one of the court meetings was is that they're even already changed legislation now to where. In a year, maybe two years, anyway, even the ones for the uh, um, uh, drive-through voting mm-hmm. will now be putting out paper ballots. Yeah, right, right. And so if all that's changing, then I think we're in a good shape. Yeah, right there. Well, I, I think that uh, you know I, I I get that electronic voting could be hacked. Um, I think the abil- ability to do the you know the processing. I mean, you know. You know, the U.S. military, you know, people don't realize, had the ability to hack a, a blender. <laughs> uh, oh, that's my new thing I, I learned today. I don't have today. a blender. Cause <laughs> I don't, there's, a, there's, a great, there's a great story where they were trying to explain this, this, this virus to w, George W. Bush, and he couldn't get, wrap his head around it. What do you mean? You know, well, of course, they took a human acid to do it. Right. But they showed it, and like, they showed this, ha- they hacked the... The internal circuitry of the of the blender, and what it was was to hack Iranian centrifuges, right? So during this time, there was all these accidents in Iran. It's because the CIA or the uh, w- w- you know intelligence services were hacking their their centrifuges, and then they were basically blowing them up. And so, um, so yeah, they have that. They, you know, we have the ability. Do you know what brand it was? <laughs> It was any brand. It was probably... It well, was, was, yeah, it was you're going to tank them now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want a margarita? We'll make a margarita for you. Yeah. Take that. Uh, do, do you think, though, that the, you know, 
you know, do you, do you feel like you need to instill any confidence though in the election staff? Because that's a that's a complicated job. I mean, Jackie Dowdy looked at it and she's like, I'm out. See you later. You know, yeah, that's hard yeah, work. No. And I'm going to tell you, I've got a real high regard for Bob Reeves. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, he's, he's a very good man. And it would, man, I'd, I'd hate to see us lose him at what he does. Yeah. Um, Bob I, I Reeves just, was working the county the other day at, uh, uh, at for t- taking property taxes. Mm-hmm. In. He was work. He was on the counter. He was taking in numbers. He was giving lunch breaks to people. Yeah, for his staff. Yeah. That's the kind of guy Bob Reeves is. That, that, he's, he is, and, and I've been in several meetings with him, and uh, even at Headwaters, we, yeah. we, you know, we depend on him over there too. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, he, the guy's just really sharp when right. it comes to numbers. Uh, I'm, I'm not that guy. Yeah, that's uh, why you need a Bob Reeves. You, you need do. Bob Reeves. Yeah. You absolutely right. do. But look, this integ- election integrity stuff. Uh, it's, it's every election cycle, mm-hmm. whether the Democrats win or the Republicans win, you see the other party screaming about foul play. Yeah. And, right. and there probably is foul play. Mm-hmm. But for somewhere like Kirk County that's got, what, 53,000 population, yeah. there's no reason why a number of paper ballots could not do 38, the job. 38,000 voters, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 39,000 so voters. No excuse for, for us not being able to go to a number of paper ballots. Right. Uh, let's, let's talk about, uh, you know, election around election. Let's talk about the sheriff's firm for a second here. Um, what's, your, what's your opinion of Sheriff Letha, and how would you work with him? I think the guy's the best sheriff we've had in a long time. I love Rusty. I've known him, went to church with him for years, and he mm-hmm. was a, a great sheriff. Uh, I think we got the right guy in there for the job. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, he's uh, he brought a whole, you know, it's like bringing in a new CEO. They bring a whole different approach mm-hmm. to how they do things, and what he has done has been remarkable. Yeah, right. And, and anything we can do to keep them with whatever all the toys are they need to do the job they're doing, mm-hmm. we need to support that. Right. Uh, I yeah. think they're the strength of our county. I think that's what people forget that, too. Like, that's my big thing. Like, I want to have the equipment to do my job right. Right. You know, and that's a big thing for a lot of these guys, too. Right. And that foundation that they put together. Mm-hmm. So where they could get that Bearcat. Yeah. I think that's what it's called. Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, th- that type of stuff, that man, that is so important. I can ready to pick that up, by the way. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. they're gonna drive it. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna drive it back. I know. I know. <laughs> He's not. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> if there, hey, listen. If there's anybody who could put the mileage in without any problem, it's that guy. Yeah, he can drive it. Right. You know, he. Right. I mean, he drives to Oklahoma from here to go watch softball. So yeah, I'm trying to talk him into taking it out on a ranch out there so we can test drive test it. Test it, right? I don't right. Think he's yeah, go for put it, it through right. the rigors. Right. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna go for it. Do you? You know, are you? One of the other areas is that, and I'm gonna. You got endorsed by We the People. No, I didn't. You did not. They have me as a preferred candidate. Preferred. But I, I, I spoke to them face to face, just okay. like we are. Yeah. And said I do not want endorsements. Right. And and they said, well, we'll just put preferred candidates. Preferred candidates. You can do that if you want to. Okay, so you're you're the preferred candidate, but they've also been very much opposed to any kind of raises for the county staff. They've been they've been very involved in um, you know opposing the budgets. Uh, the the former uh, commissioner didn't basically go to work during the budget season. You're facing a very difficult budget if you get elected. Um, well, this year they're facing it, but in 2025, 2026, it's going to be it's going to be another tight tight budget. How do you how do you balance that out? Because you know, like the sheriff's office still has struggles. They get to a point where they bring people in, they get them locked in, and then then they're back down to. It. We see that with all of our law yeah, enforcement. But you have, I think you have to stop and look and see what caused all of the the, mm-hmm. the budget. To get out of whack, and yeah. you have the unfunded mandates, right? From and the you've state. got a lot yep. of that stuff. Yeah. You've got inflation mm-hmm. that was very high, yeah. And then you had that bond election, yeah, where you did have a bond that was passed in right. there. And and uh, I was up there for a lot of those meetings, and and uh, um, whenever they got down to the voting and stuff, I could not even understand why anybody voted no, right? And questioned that right there with Rob Kelly, mm-hmm. and I said, I've sit here and listened to Judge Kelly ask. 20 times, where can we cut this? What can we do here? Mm-hmm. And nobody had any answers. Right. And so then you just have to take those raw numbers. But where I can see a difference is I think we, we spend money in places we shouldn't spend money. Right. I mean, we just recently bought for the public defender's office a building over here. Yeah. And without blinking an eye, they say, well, we're going to spend $500,000 to bring it up to the, the standard. standards. And then they leave. And it didn't have a lease. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, they and never had a lease on right. it. So first off, why did we buy the building? Yeah, because now we've got another building that we don't have the funds for maintenance on. Right, 
and you junked another five hundred thousand dollars in there on top of it. Right. And those types of things for me are irresponsible. Yeah. I oh, mean, I, and be, I'm not trying right. to. I mean, I'll call out the whole court. I don't right. care. For me, the whole thing is that's just right. who I am. The uh, and and you know how do do you solve the issues though? The bond, the the two big bonds that failed. Um, I viewed them as a rebuke of the commissioner's court to a certain degree. But, I mean, they're so needed, though, especially in the courthouse. How do you, how do you resolve that issue? Yeah, you know, that is going to be a tough situation mm -hmm. to tackle. But mm -hmm. we have got to set up some type of an escrow system uh, like you would on your home. Yeah. You know, we've got to set up some type of a saving system towards these big ticket items. Mm -hmm. I talked to uh, um, uh, the lady that's, uh, that spoke up there from uh, uh, Kerrville Pets Alive? Yeah, Karen Guerrero? Yes, 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 after that meeting. Mm -hmm. and, and she had come in and very graciously told them, if y'all need help with some of the stuff that's not in here, uh, you know, let us know, maybe we can help. Right. And so I called her out in the hallway and said, you know, I think what would be a better idea for y'all would be to set up an escrow. Because 10, 15 years down the road, they're going to start saying, we've got to pass another bond now mm -hmm. so that we can fix this building because it's falling apart. Right. And, and if y'all were able to help in those areas, I think you would see more value for your dollar. Right, right. Because right. Those, those issues out there at the Ag Barn and the courthouse and stuff, they're very real. Yeah. But I also believe that, that the committees that did a great job trying to put together those bonds, but I don't think they had good marching orders. Yeah. They, they kind of use the sky's the limit. What's right. The, what, what can we build here for these Taj Mahals? Well, I mean, I mean you know, some of the things, though, that they... You know, I was I was asking this question the other day, like, you know, if you look at the actual structure of the of the animal shelter, it's, you know, it's basically it's basically a metal building, mm -hmm. not too fancy, but it's going to be expensive. Everything's more expensive now, too. You know, what is the it, it, are the requirements for for the, the, the court? Are those Taj Mahal like or do you think that they're necessary? Everything was necessary with that. Uh is, is what you know be? so the courthouse you know i feel thought those were really practical things that were unfunded mandates do you think though can you go back to the voters again with a bond and, you know and i think you have to wait three years or five three years, years yeah something like yeah. that before you can but but some of those unfunded mandates they did not they again they were stretching way out here yeah when they talked about the 12-man jury they had to have well mm -hmm. if you talk to judge harris She'll tell you that anytime we need that jury room, we just mark it on the calendar and we go use one of the jury pools upstairs. Right. You know, there, there's ways they can Wizard. practically do okay. those things. When you're talking about structural things that need to be fixed, like out there, the roof and stuff on the, the building, you right. know, that, those, those are things that I think if we had have had a real case to plead before the people and done away with building new stuff in right. the mix of it and just taking care of the, the needed the necessities right. that were there, I think they would have passed. Well, the Ag Barn one, you know, I think was, was I can't remember which one suffered the worst defeat, but they were, but they were both pretty close. But again, I mean, that's, that Ag Barn is a point of pride for a lot of people, and it's heavily, heavily used. Well, the soil's contaminated. Yeah, the mm -hmm. soil's gross. Yeah, yeah. 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 Many, mega and, contaminated. And yes, and that's got to be fixed. Yeah. You know. Right. I think they now are saying, I think last time I heard that they were, it's basically a parking lot for the uh, sheriff's office when there's a storm. You know, they put cars in there because it protects them from the hail. So they're going to do away with uh, equestrian stuff then? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Well, and they said, and Jake had said, that there's really not, they can't compete with out, the outlying areas because the equestrian facilities are superior. Like there's one in Bernie or, or you know, there's something in Frederick's. I mean, there's all over there's equestrian facilities. So the, the old ag barn is now basically closed for, they have some things in there, but it's, mm -hmm. it's right. and you go in there and you're like, man, this thing's ratty. Holy smokes. And it's contaminated too. Right. So, right. Um, but yeah, those are, the, those are some of well, those. You know, during the hurricanes, I used to have to help put together shelters for people yeah. to stay in. I'll, I'll get a hold of all the churches and stuff. So, you know, if they change something up where they could use that for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, things yeah. like that could be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Do you, one of the things I asked this, uh, Peter Lewis, I asked him the other day, I said, uh, he was on here and he's basically the county's architect. And right. I said, you know, this is one of the few courthouses in Texas. That's like, you look at it and you're like, yeah, you know, every other courthouse in the state of Texas. Wow. That's amazing. I know this was a re replacement one, but it's well used right. and it's a lot of the historical stuff has been taken out of it. 
And that building in the back, Peter was telling me the history of that, that they went through and they kind of tried to get it to match the original building. Do you just start over at some point or do you, do you, do you continually reuse that thing? Because that was designed for a small county. We're not that necessarily that small yeah, anymore. Yeah, I, I tell you, it would, you, would, you would probably, you better let an old generation die off before you tear down that courthouse yeah. and start a new one. Right, right. <laughs> That's a good answer. I'm yeah. not going to be around here <laughs> to do that one. I, I know what kind of uprising yeah. you're going to have for that. Yeah, you know, it should be like Vegas, though, you know? Yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. we're going to take, take See, that. See, all these veterans down. are going to gather around it with their rifles and oh, yeah. say, don't touch our, our yeah. building. What's going right. to happen? It's really, you know, but if you go into the places of it, there's very little left right. of what it was historically. Right. You know, it's basically just the facade of it at right. this point. You know, you could, there's some things you could do practically. But I want to go back when you, when, when you touched a little bit on that uh, Liberty in Action group. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's a contentious point for a lot of people, and, and it's one that, that, that bothers me more than anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I've told you before, I've got friends on every side of this. Mm-hmm. I mean, the people that are running against the party chairs. Yeah. I've got a board member on that group. Yeah. I've, and, and and I've got very dear, close friends that are supporting Tom Jones on one side and on the other. And so it'd be kind of like me coming in and, and, and saying, uh, Lewis, I want to get your endorsement. Yeah. And, and you're saying, Tom, I support you. I'm going to vote for you and all that. And then going and getting Harley Blue and saying, I want your endorsement. Mm-hmm. I want this and him saying absolutely I'm right. good for it because I am literally a person I think gets along with about everybody that I know right and so that stuff right there that's the reason I will not allow those folks or people they can they can make me a preferred candidate because they interviewed me mm-hmm. and that's great the interview was open to anybody but I I don't want to, to to go against my other friends over here because I love them dearly yeah and, and don't want them to think I'm opposed to them. Right. right. Well, it I'm takes not. all kinds for a new community to work. It does. Well, like Crystal Smith, it's, it's, you know, the mm-hmm. president over at Republican Women's, they've been great donors, and her father-in-law was mm-hmm. my board member, uh, president yeah. for years. Mm-hmm. I, wouldn't, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't play those and That's hard, too, because, you know, <laughs> she, was, she was on here yesterday and talking about, uh, you know, the challenges that are facing this now. You've got, you've got a pretty divided party. I mean, there, it's, there is. I mean, it's, and it's, and it's pretty ferocious and Liberty in action, I think is a big, big part of that. But you know, how do you, how do you, how do you, to me, I look at reasonableness. We're going to fix that. Yeah. How do you fix I've, that? I've talked to, I've talked to folks at Liberty in action, the halls. Mm-hmm. I've talked to John Elliott that that's on the other side of that disagreement. Yeah, right. A very good friend and a supporter Former of chair mine. of the party. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's a supporter of mine. And, and, and I've talked to both of those folks and said, you are acting like petulant little children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You all have good points. You have reasons behind what you believe. Mm-hmm. They may be well-founded. Right. But as a counselor, I'm going to tell you, I'd like to sit down with both of you, these groups, and sit down and work through right. this. And both parties have said they would be willing to do that. Uh, yesterday, I, I, I was kind of a surprising tweet, and I see Gil Salinas uh, sitting behind you now here, and he can listen to this too. The Texas Tribune's... Evan Smith uh, tweeted out yesterday, you know, longtime journalist here in, in Texas. Uh, you know, he said that he just feels like now the, 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 the rift in the Republican Party is so bad that he's not sure it can be fixed and uh, that there's so much, you know, there's so much vitriol attached to it. And again, I mean, right. When I look at candidates and who I want, you know, like the ones we talk to, it's like, well, are you reasonable? You know, how do you how do you manage growth with being fair to the neighbors next door who are suddenly faced with ten thousand homes? You know, how do you how do you how do you do that? How do you how do you manage water reasonably? Um, and you know, those are those are some of those big issues. Well, one of the biggest things that you have to remember is that it's property rights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can't ever infringe upon people's property rights. Yeah. But just to a certain degree that, that the law actually allows. Right. You know. And I think that's one of those issues, too, where you're, you're looking at it and you say, well, what, at what point do I, you know, you, you, the America's built on compromise. I'm sorry, folks, you know, and I know there's a very much of an anti-compromise movement here. Um, but you've got to figure out there's got to be some ways that we can find some commonality here, right. you know. I don't know if you just all sit together at Mama Cedars and have soup or something like that. I mean, what can we figure it See, out? it's because I'm in here. He said soup. Yeah, right. right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, thank yeah. you. Yeah, there we go. There we go. It might it might be as simple as that, but mm-hmm. it might also be as simple as is is you. A lot of times, you get people that got offended by somebody, yeah, and so they just have a real disdain towards them and don't right. like right. them, and they're not willing to to give see past that any 
level. Right. So sometimes you just have to recognize who those people are and, and say, okay, we, we hear you, let's, but let's move past the personality and personal things. Right. And let's look at the real, because at core, I know, like I said, folks on both this side have the same core beliefs. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so there's no reason for this type of a, a, a split that right. we have. Right. Well, it's, it's part of the it's part of our story for this uh, primary. The early voting starts February twentieth. Uh, uh, last day to register, I think, is on Monday, uh, mm -hmm. and then the vote is on March fourth, uh, uh, or March what's March third? Fifth. Fifth. Super was Tuesday. The, Super Tuesday. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> Someday in there. Thank Four God Tom's here. <laughs> what is it? What is, what, what, why am I? I think it's the city elections, May 4th, March 4th. You're I just keep, mixing numbers I keep up now. it's April. I'm already ready for the eclipse. I would like them to know the correct election yeah. day. Okay, if we need to, if we want to find out more about you, where do we go? Um, do you have a website? Do you have uh, all that kind of? Yeah. You can see your signs everywhere. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, the signs are everywhere. Yeah, yeah uh, Tom I, Jones. I think it's campaign to elect Tom Jones. Okay. All right. Very good. Tom. Excellent. Thank, thank you for being right. here. I appreciate uh, it.